In this quick lesson, I want to introduce you to a shorthand syntax or a shortcut for basic if else blocks. This design reduces the total number of lines needed whenever you have an if combined with an else and you want to store a result from either one. An important thing to note here is that this shortcut will not work if you have one or more L if statements. This is only for scenarios where it's an either or situation. If this, then option A, else option B. So let's first take a look at an example using the standard syntax and then we'll dive into the shortcut. So let's say I'm writing a basic program that wants to check if a United States zip code is a valid zip code. And for now, the only criteria I'll have is that a zip code must be exactly five characters long. So let's say I have a variable called zip code and I'll set it equal to the string 90210, which is the Beverly Hills zip code. In case you're curious why I represented this as a string instead of as a number, it's because there are zip codes in the United States that start with a zero, and if you wrote a number with a leading zero in Python, it would simply ignore it. So in this case, we have to write it as a string to account for those scenarios. So what I want to do in this program is to eventually have a variable, I'm gonna call it check, and I want check to be assigned one of two strings. I want check to be assigned the string valid if my zip code is valid and the string invalid if my zip code is invalid. So how can I build this out? Well, I can build this out using the traditional if else syntax. So I can say if len of my zip code string is equal to five. If my zip code string has exactly five characters, I can have a check variable, declare it and assign it to valid. Then below, I can put an else for all other scenarios. In other words, if my length is equal to anything but five, I can take my check and assign it to invalid. To reiterate, there's nothing wrong with this syntax. This makes technical sense. In this lesson, I just want to show you a shortcut for this exact same logic uh, so that you don't have to write out uh, four lines because you can accomplish the exact same thing with one line. Let's take a look at how that's gonna look. So I'll begin by writing my actual variable name. So I'm going to write check, then put my equal sign. And here's where we're going to dive into the right side, which can be a little bit more confusing. I don't think it's particularly complex. I just think it's a lot of elements stacking up in a specific order that you'll have to commit to memory or at least be comfortable seeing until it all makes sense. So the first thing I put here is the value that I want check to be if uh, some kind of condition evaluates to true. So in other words, we're basically putting what line number five is giving to us, but we're writing it first. So the first thing I'm writing here is actually a string of valid. After this, we're writing the if statement that will describe when check will be assigned valid or under what condition, in what circumstance. Of course, that condition comes straight from line number four. It is the condition that assigns valid to check. So I can basically literally copy and paste line number four after this valid syntax. So I'm going to write valid if len of zip code is equal to five. Now, what about the else? The else simply comes after this. And then after the else keyword, I write the value that I want to assign to check if my condition is not valid. Or in other words, if this evaluates to false instead of true. In other words, putting exactly what we have on line number seven. So here I'm simply going to put a string of invalid. If there's any confusion, I simply think it's because there's a lot going on on this right-hand side of the equal sign, but it's really the exact same logic as we applied above. We're just reducing it to a single line. You don't have to use one or the other. If this is too confusing, you can hold off on it. I just want you to be aware because you're gonna see this in other people's code. So we put what check we want check to be equal to if this evaluates to true, and then if this evaluates to false, we put an else and put what check will be otherwise. Okay, so now what I can do here is comment out this for now. There's really no reason to have it for now. And I can print out the value of check. And now we have a zip code string that is equal to a length of five characters. So now we should see check represented with the string valid. So there we can see valid appears on the right. As soon as I change zip code to anything that is not five, for example, here is a string of four characters, we're gonna get invalid. And here is a string of six characters and we're going to get invalid as well. So again, this syntax on line number one is a little bit of a shorthand syntax. That's all I wanted to cover in this lesson. If you have a basic program that has an if else design and you don't wanna write out four separate lines and it's a scenario like this where you want, for example, a value to be retained based on a condition of to true, 
versus an alternate value if the condition does not evaluate to true. It's for these kinds of scenarios that you can use this one line shortcut that we have on line number nine. Again, this will not work if you have one elif or two elifs or anything more complex than an either or scenario, A or B, this or that, right? It's either valid or invalid in this case. But for these types of simple scenarios, you can have this one line or syntax. It, some people argue it makes the program a lot cleaner, reduces the total amount of code that you need to write. You just have to familiarize yourself with what it looks like. That's all there is to cover in this lesson, so I will see you in the next one.